Good evening, all fact. It's March 12th, the last day of the term. I'm Ken Passion. And I'm Giovanna Menes here with your distance learning announcements. Dear families, our school staff have really worked hard to support families and students during this pandemic. If you would like to share your positive thoughts on, on a certain CO staff member, please complete the form and the QR code provided. We would like to recognize these distant learning heroes to, for the positive impact they have made on the students and families. And it's Friday once again, so let's see what we've got for Pop with Kaylee. What's up, Wolfpack? I'm Paul Sabulo, and this is Pop, where you pop in until you post the pack. Even though we're all stuck at home, remember to use our hashtag CHSWPTV for a chance to be on our show next week. Now let's check out our Wolf of the Week, Callie Zoller. Hi, my name is Kaylee Zoller, and I'm your Wolf of the Week. COVID really affected my senior year because... I didn't get football games, Friday nights, or homecoming, senior ball, any of that. But I'm really glad that I am able to get my senior year of softball and hopefully a graduation. My favorite memory was definitely all the bus rides to softball games because that's where we really bonded together and had the most fun and I will really cherish those memories. Some things I'm involved in are softball, obviously, and then I'm also in National Honor Society and Vocal Ensemble. And that's also another thing that I missed out this year is concerts for Vocal Ensemble and Golden Empire and stuff like that. I'm also part of March for Our Lives. My plan after graduation is to go to CRC for my first two years, and then after that I'm gonna transfer to a four year. I don't plan on playing college at CRC, but if I do want to, then I could just walk on. My biggest piece of advice for freshmen would just to be in, like, enjoy every single moment that you have in high school because it goes by so fast and you will regret it if you don't take advantage of every single moment that you have for these four years. To keep myself busy during quarantine, uh, one of the things I would do a lot was ride my bike. I did that a lot. And now when I have free time, like I like to go on walks with my mom or take my dog on a walk. Um, making bracelets was something that I like to do during quarantine. And yeah. Thank you, Callie. Good luck with the rest of the year. Well, that's all I have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Paul Sabulo. Back to the anchors. Thanks, Kaylee. Now we have Ashley talking about the FBI Director Senate hearing. So good morning, Chairman Derman, Ranking Member Grassley, members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today to talk about the great work of the men and women of the FBI. Let me start with a quick update on the investigation into the January 6th attack here at the Capitol. I was appalled, like you, at the violence and destruction that we saw that day. I was appalled that you, our country's elected leaders, were victimized right here in these very halls. That attack, that siege, was criminal behavior, plain and simple, and it's behavior that we, the FBI, view as domestic terrorism. It's got no place in our democracy, and tolerating it would make a mockery of our nation's rule of law. What's up, Wolfpack? It's Ashley Borton. Today, we're going to take a look at the Senate hearing involving the FBI director on what happened on Capitol Hill and what the FBI is willing to do about it. Take a look, Wolfpack. We're chasing down leads. We're reviewing evidence, combing through digital media to identify, investigate, and arrest anyone who broke the law that day. And our greatest partner in this investigation has been the American people themselves your constituents. Citizens from around the country have sent us more than 270,000 digital media tips. Some have even taken the painful step of turning in their friends or their family members. But with their help, we've identified hundreds of suspects and opened hundreds of investigations in all but one of our 56 field offices. And of those identified, we've arrested already more than 270 individuals to date, over 300 when you include the ones of our partners, with more subjects being identified and charged just about every single day. Do you stand by your, do you stand by your previous testimony? 
that white supremacist extremism is the dominant, most persistent source of domestic terrorism threats we face today? Uh, I would certainly say, as I think I've said consistently in the past, that uh, racially motivated violent extremism, specifically of the sort that advocates for the superiority of the white race, uh, is a persistent, evolving threat. It's the biggest chunk of our racially motivated violent extremism cases, for sure. Uh, and, in, and racially motivated violent extremism is the biggest chunk of our domestic terrorism portfolio, if you will, overall. I will also say that the same group of people we're talking about have been responsible for uh, the most lethal attacks uh, over the last, uh, say, decade. Is, uh, and when I look at what happened on January 6th, it appears that uh, right-wing white supremacist groups played an instrumental role in the violent assault. Is that your conclusion also? Well, uh, let me answer that this way. I think we're basically saying the same thing. I mean, we don't tend to think, we at the FBI, don't tend to think of violent extremism in terms of right, left. You know, we, that's not a, a, a spectrum that we look at. What I would say is that it is clear, as I think I said to Chairman Durbin, that uh, a, a large and growing number of the people that we have arrested so far in, the, uh, in connection with the 6th are what we would call militia violent extremism, uh, militia violent extremists, and then there have been some uh, already that have emerged who I would have put in the racially motivated violent extremist bucket. We focus on the violence and the violations of federal law. Uh, and then the ideology comes into it as a, uh, a further piece of the puzzle as we build out the case. Uh, but our focus is on the violence. We don't care what ideology motivates somebody, as Judge Garland, I think, himself said uh, just last week. We don't care whether it's left, right, up, down, diagonal, or any other way. If the ideology is motivating violence and it violates federal law, we're coming after it. That's all we have for you today, Wolfpack. Back to you, anchors. That's all we have for this term, Wolf Pack. Remember, the strength of the wolf is the pack. And the strength of the pack is the wolf. Have a great spring break.